Today we're taking a look at a unique noise cancelling gaming headset. The company behind these took the best technology currently used in aviation, made it even better and created what they believe are the headphones for the professional esports athletes playing on huge stages. At the moment I'm making this video, you can't even buy these as a regular consumer, but since I had the unique opportunity to actually hold them in my hand, I decided I should take you guys on a tour so we can discover together what they're all about. This is not a sponsored video. Nobody contacted me or sent me anything or paid me to say either good or bad things about them. I just came across these headphones and couldn't resist wanting to learn as much as I could about them and I just wanted to take you guys along for the ride. So let's begin. This is the box they come into and you can see it features a rather simple design. You've got the A-Zone logo printed on almost all the sides and A-Zone is actually a very young company. It was born specifically to target the esports industry. I'm talking about professional gamers playing huge tournaments in very big arenas for thousands of fans. This industry has some very specific needs when it comes to headphones and headsets and audio and this company was born to tackle exactly these needs and bring to life products like these headphones that we will review today. If you guys aren't familiar with this, playing games professionally comes with a huge set of audio challenges. Obviously the gamer needs to be able to hear his game and to communicate to his teammates and when you're doing this casually in your bedroom this is not a problem. But when you take the gamer and move him inside a huge arena full of tens of thousands of screaming fans and maybe huge BA speakers blasting music and game sounds, this actually becomes a bit of a problem. Ideally, you want to be able to take all of this crowd noise and PA noise away from the player so he can focus on the game. This is obviously easier said than done. And yet, the A-Live headset or a live headset from A-Zone is planning to do exactly that. Then there's also troubleshooting. If an audio issue arises, you want to be as fast as possible solving it because you're keeping on hold the players, the fans inside the arena, and maybe hundreds of thousands of people watching online on Twitch or on YouTube and so on. Sometimes troubleshooting can be hard though. It can be a long process potentially, but A-Zone included something to help tournament organizers speed up this process as well. We're going to talk more about troubleshooting later, but for now, let's take a look inside a box and see what we get. Opening the box, we see a leaf which contains a quick start guide with everything you need to know and the headphones themselves. These come with a USB cable as they feature their own internal sound card and also include DSP chips for both the headphones and the microphone plus some active noise cancelling circuitry. Just by taking a good look at these headphones you can tell that they're built to be very heavy duty. There's a lot of thick metal and nice plastic and the headband adjustment sliders take quite a bit of force to be adjusted. They also have numbers and I'm pretty sure that once you adjust them you can throw them around and toss them everywhere and you won't need to readjust the hitman. All of the joints feel very strong and reassuring. The microphone boom arm as well. You can position it any way you want it and it will stay in place. Also nice is the fact that the USB terminal has screws so that the cable won't fall when there's a tense moment in a match. I find that pretty cool. And overall, these headphones feel pretty good. The materials are very nice. They seem to be the type that resist fingerprints and scratch as well. And this is actually a great feature because honestly, I think these headphones will get tossed around quite a bit while they travel the entire world to different big events. So having machine metal and thick plastic is actually a really good thing that will keep them from looking awful after just a couple of uses. So. This is actually great. I like that. Something else I like is the simple utilitarian sort of aesthetic that these headphones have. Oftentimes you're going to find gaming headphones being in a competition for the most LED scorpions or dragons or spiders on a headset. But A-Zone went with this very simple, minimalistic and utilitarian look that actually feels a lot more professional and serves as a good canvas for tournament organizers or players to customize with some stickers maybe in this area if needed and I actually quite like that. I think they look pretty good and I much rather dig this type of look compared to the usual gamer look. Speaking about LEDs earlier, these do have some LEDs but they serve a very specific purpose. I'm talking about these LEDs over here which A-Zone calls 
the Admin Detection System or ADS. The LEDs will show if there's a good connection to the operating system, if the headphones are actually making sound, and if the microphone is on. And this is supposed to help tournament organizers faster troubleshoot issues because they won't have to manually check they'll just be able to see from far away if everything works as expected. This is the first time I'm seeing such a feature on some headphones and I find it amazing. I'm sure that everybody using this will very much appreciate this feature that Azone added to these headphones. Features like these are always great, but let's talk about sound because these are gaming headphones at the end of the day. And when I heard that they were borrowing from the aviation industry, at least in terms of technology, I got a bit skeptical. And that's because I actually heard some aviation headsets in the past and I felt that they sounded underwhelming. These headphones sound like a sad smiley face. And what I mean by that is that the frequency response is kind of flat but with a bump in the high mids, forming what looks like a sad smiley face mouth. That's not a bad thing, I'm just surprised by the fact that most gaming headphones go with a very bass boosted or V-shaped frequency response, but A-Zone actually went with what seems to be sort of the Sennheiser frequency response, but without the veal that Sennheisers are usually as associated with. There's a nice foundation of low frequencies and high frequencies, but the high mids have a tiny bit of bump, at least to my ears. When you first pick them up and put them on your head and play some music through them, they sound kind of boring. Um, this is because kicks will lack rumble and impact and hi-hats will lack some fizz. All in all, they seem to lack the typical excitement that you expect from some very nice and expensive gaming headphones. And this is because usually gaming headphones try to make things sound larger than life. But these feel like they are pretty surgical. I started to think that the frequency response was the result of some design limitations. These headphones try to offer a lot of passive noise isolation. Maybe this is the best you can do with this sort of design. But then I remember that these headphones are full of DSP chips inside. And DSP chips are very good at equalizing even the cheapest headphone drivers. So I naturally started playing with some EQ. After messing around with the curve a little bit, I was very surprised by how much more engaging I could make them sound. The drivers inside these headphones are capable of reproducing the entire audible frequency spectrum from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. And it didn't take a very aggressive EQ curve to make them sound more modern. I only added about 4 decibels of boost for the lows and the highs and they already sounded as you would expect them to. So the frequency response they have which is rather flat or even mid forward seemed like a choice. In a lot of studios, you're going to find these small square shaped speakers. In the past, engineers used them in order to imitate the sound of the old TVs. Studio monitors had a very nice, exciting and flat frequency response, but TVs didn't. And they used these speakers to see how their mixes would translate. But they soon discovered that when using these speakers, it almost felt like a magnifying glass was applied to the mid frequencies. They could focus better on the area where the ear is most sensitive. And they used these to perform surgical EQ cuts, to separate instruments, to make the vocals pop. And these are called mix cubes. Oratone made them in the past, now a lot of different companies make them, but I digress. What I'm trying to say here is that surgical is the best way I can define the sound of these headphones. They feel like a specialized tool that allows you to focus on the mid-range. And what you gain from this? A lot of intelligibility. I realized this as I toggled the EQ on and off. With the EQ on, music sounded more engaging, but with the EQ off, Everything was a lot more identifiable, more intelligible. Every instrument was easier to find in the mix. So I was giving up a lot of this intelligibility just for some extra low frequency weight and high frequency crispness. And given that these headphones are designed to be used in a environment where being able to identify a small distant sound can make the difference between winning thousands and maybe millions of dollars, I think this is a great advantage to have. I think that Azone designed these headphones with the goal of making them the de facto headphones for esports and they took every little step they could towards their goal. This frequency response has to be one of these steps. They could have easily programmed the DSP chips inside to equalize the drivers and make them sound more modern, but they didn't. They went with the frequency response that's actually good for you, even if you don't like them. Instead of giving you the candy, they gave you the vegetables, just because in the end, 
they're actually better for you. And I kind of like that. But apart from the frequency response, a very important thing in games is soundstage. A nice, big and wide soundstage will make pinpointing the enemy very easy. I expected these to suck in terms of soundstage. I'll be honest with you. And compared to something like the Sennheiser's HD 598 again, they do lose. Remember, these are open back but they don't lose by much. I would say that you get 80% of the sound stage you get in the Sennheisers in these. But you also have to think about the fact that with the Sennheisers, I hear everything that's happening around the room. With these, I don't hear a thing. Now, I don't have an arena packed with fans, I'm sorry, but I did some noise canceling tests and tested these against some construction earmuffs and against some Sony WH-1000XM. If you keep your expectations reasonable, because 100% noise cancelling is impossible because of bone conduction, because of the air in your mouth, these do a pretty good job at noise cancelling. But in my test, they actually fell second to the construction earmuffs. They beat the Sony's, which only feature active noise cancelling, but they couldn't beat the construction earmuffs, which are made out of metal and have plastic and stiffer ear pads. Another very important part of competitive gaming is communication. When you are inside a fully packed arena with thousands of screaming fans and huge speakers, you're going to have a lot of trouble picking up just the voice without extra added noise. And even your best figure of eight or super cardioid microphone will struggle. And then add to this the fact that during tense moments, players will often scream or speak very loudly, and then they'll have moments in which they'll be very soft spoken. And the microphone has to be able to provide a very clean vocal signal throughout all of these different sound pressure levels. So this is not an easy task for a headset microphone, but this is an area where A-Zone borrowed a lot from the aviation industry. Judging by the looks of this microphone, I think they went with an electric cardioid capsule that further gets processed by the internal DSP chips which applied noise reduction and compression to the signal. The same EQ philosophy was kept here as well because the microphone signal, as you can hear, is fairly aggressively high and low pass filtered. I think these filters help take away some noise reduction artifacts and also serve as sort of a mixing tool because when you have a full game playing in your earphones, you don't want to hear teammates in the whole frequency range. You don't want them covering the sound of the game. You want them to be there in the mix. Of course, now I'm speaking in my room over here, which is a rather controlled environment. So the signal might sound a little bit lo-fi, sort of like an old phone. But I think that if you go inside an arena and you have a lot of noise around you and you're playing a game and you hear the game in your headphones, the fact that the vocals kind of sound lo-fi is actually a good thing. So I think this is also a case of a zone giving you vegetables instead of the candy you might first want. Here's how the microphone performs in terms of plosives. If I say burrito and placebo and burrito, placebo, burrito, placebo, you can see how the microphone handles P's and B's with this built-in pop filter. And then something that's quite annoying sometimes is when people have their microphone underneath their nose and they're breathing into it. So let's try and see if the microphone picks up my breathing noises. There you go. In terms of handling the microphone, things are pretty good. All the way to the back, it gets muted and you get some audio feedback in your earphones, letting you know that the microphone is muted. You also get the LED here saying that the microphone is muted. And as you turn the microphone on, you actually hear the fact that it's on now. And you can see all the three LEDs are now on. So all in all, the microphone offers a pretty solid experience. And I think it's obvious that I actually enjoy this product quite a bit. I think it's a very solid one. But of course, there are things that can be improved. And one of these things is comfort. Usually good passive noise canceling comes with poor comfort because you need a lot of clamping force in order to achieve good passive noise isolation. But this is not a problem with these headphones. Comfort with these in terms of clamping force is actually good and you get used to it pretty fast. I do have a problem though with the headband because the cushioning is a little bit too thin for my head. The weight of these headphones, which is not terrible, they're not very, very heavy, but they're a little bit on the heavier side 
gets concentrated to a tiny point which presses against your head. After 30 minutes or so of gaming, I start kind of feeling all of that pressure. Maybe it's just my head and the shape of my head, but I wonder if A-Zone thought about using a suspension band design like these AKGs here. At least in my opinion, this could better take the weight of the headphones and distribute it over the entire head instead of just in one point like the A-Zone currently do. Obviously, this is not as heavy duty as the current design is. All I know is that the current design is a little bit painful for me at least. The ear pads on these are quite nice. They're made out of a high quality pleather material that's perforated for some enhanced airflow and also probably because of some acoustic reasons. They feel really good on your head. Your ear has enough space in there. It doesn't touch anything, at least in my case, and they feel good on the head. I really like these ear pads and they have a pretty good feature which is the fact that they're magnetically attached. Imagine this, you have a player using these for a few hours playing a huge series and then another team has to come and play at the same system, same computer. You just take the ear pads that are dirty and soaked with sweat, take them away and you put in some nice and new clean ones and there you go. The headphones are ready for the next player. I was very skeptical about these, but they won me over. They are really great at what they set out to do. A-Zone created a really solid product. They thought about everything. They added a lot of great features for eSports. I don't know how much they cost, but I can guess they're pretty expensive. These features are not really necessary for someone playing at home. There are a lot of cheaper options for us. But for the professional gamers, these are indispensable, I think. I'm very happy I had the chance to try these and to make this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. It was a long one, but I hope it was worth it and you enjoyed it. And if you did, maybe hit the like button and maybe subscribe to this channel so you can be notified when I upload a new video. But now I'm tired and I want to end it up here. So thank you very much for watching. My name is Andrew Andrew. I hope you'll have an awesome day. I hope you'll have an awesome week and I will see you next time.